Hey everyone, I recently picked up a few new Daniel Smith tubes and they're all these uh, very very <laughs> granulating watercolors and I thought it would be just fun to do dedicated videos to each one of them so we can also explore uh, together how they mix with other paints and kind of uh, see how they perform. Now Daniel Smith tubes are quite an investment so it always takes me a lot of thinking and you know checking online and I always always use their dot card which I highly recommend if you want to try Daniel Smith paints shell out those dollars get the dot card because in the long run it will save you a lot of money and you know you can always uh, compare colors that you want with the colors that you have so I highly highly recommend uh, kind of starting out with their dot card and yeah I finally bit the bullet on this one and got a few new tubes and I really want to see which ones might uh, be selected to go with me on my uh, coming on my upcoming California trip. I'm hoping to also do a video showing what I'm taking on that trip. So uh, stay tuned for that. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe, hit the notification bell, all those good things. Leave me a comment. And um, yeah, I thought we'll just have some good old watercolor mixing fun. So let's get to it. Uh, today I will start with the color Lunar Earth and which looks like this Well, the tube does doesn't tell you much. I know um, So we can swatch it and see how it plays with others So here's the tube again, that's all the information we're gonna get from it and let's start playing. So a little bit of a spoiler. I'm going to put up every week a video showcasing one of these four new colors that I bought. So next week we'll have Lunar Red Rock, after that Lunar Blue, and then last is Hematite, which I still haven't played with. But spoiler alert, um, between those three, Lunar Earth, this one here, Lunar Red Rock, Lunar Blue, this was the one that I kind of liked the least and I think this is kind of a more specialty color and I'll explain to you why. I do think it's going to be fantastic for certain purposes but um, yeah, so let's start with the uh, swatching. You can see this is very opaque when you apply it heavily and then as you add water it becomes kind of more and more transparent and you kind of just get the granulation. You know, it's like there's not a lot of a base color, but there is this heavy granulation. And let's start with the mixing. So I'll just tell you kind of immediately what my thoughts were as I swatched this. Uh, again, I find it kind of more interesting to see how colors mix with their complementary colors or colors that are further away from them on the color wheel. Not to say that I don't mix, you know, like yellow and oranges or browns and oranges or colors that are closer on the color wheel, but that's just less interesting. You know, it's more fun to see those neutral shades, those really interesting mixes of very different colors. That to me is kind of the fun in playing like this. And I do think that the mixtures that you get are so interesting, but I'm also wondering how I haven't actually painted with this. And I'm wondering if, if, this is for someone who like granulation like me if there is such a thing as too much of a good thing and you know when does something like i would i would really call this a specialty color because i find the effect of the granulation so much more dramatic than most of my other colors so i'm really kind of wondering how it will look 
let's talk a little bit about the colors and then I'll go back to like general thoughts about this. So I started with the uh, um, mixing it with ultramarine blue. That's the first color I mixed. And again, it's like so interesting. The mix is because Lunar Earth has a very almost transparent kind of base color is how I call it. You mostly get the blue and then that warm granulation. And then also when I mixed it with chromium blue, cerulean blue chromium from Daniel Smith, it's the one of the blues that come in the ultimate mixing set. Um, again, you get these really interesting grays that have that warm granulation. And I actually found these very, very attractive. Um, I'm not sure, you know, I, I don't know if I could use something like that for a sky because skies don't have brown granulation for the most part. <laughs> but I'll get back to uh, what I think this could be great for in a little bit. So the next mix is Naples yellow. And I said before, I'm not like a huge, it just, it's not as interesting to me to mix colors that are close to each other. But I do think it really made some interesting mixes with Naples yellows. And yeah, I think these would be fun. Okay, so let's get into it. I think this color could be amazing when painting beach sand you know waves meeting the sand and also probably urban environment which you know it tends to have dust and sidewalks and concrete and all these interesting textures to it so I don't do a lot of like nature painting and I'm trying to think, yeah, I think this would also be really interesting for rocks. Takes me back to wondering how much of this you can use. And probably it's one of those things that, you know, a little goes a long way or less is more. But I do plan on taking this with me uh, just because I'm really creative taking this with me to California and I don't know I keep talking about that trip like it's like some sketching painting trip <laughs> I'm going with my kids it's kids it's a very like family um intense trip so we'll see how it works but I will really do my best to kind of at least try and sketch like really really simply and just have some color play so maybe actually something like this will work well because you know, the, the texture here, that effect maybe can cover for some lack of detail or complexity in my sketches. I don't know. We shall see. Um, the mixes with, you know, kind of pinks. I started with quinacridone rose. Then I switched to quinacridone coral. Uh, they are, they're really nice. I don't know where I would use them. I was thinking, you know, maybe something like Los Angeles. I'm trying to think, you know, sunset or something like that. Maybe when there's a little bit dust around, maybe for that atmospheric painting, maybe that could work. Um, it also reminds me if you've ever been to a city called Toulouse in France, the city center the old city center is all built from this gorgeous pink rocks so if you're going on a painting trip to toulouse first of all go to the town center and search for an ice cream place that has the best dark chocolate ice cream um i was there 21 years ago so i'm pretty sure it's all exactly the same as i remember okay just kidding sidetracking here let's get back to it Okay, so this was where it really, really got fun with the color mixes. This color with other granulating colors, but also colors that have like a base color. I, I need something, you know, in the base, not just the granulation. This was really, really fun. I loved the mixtures that it made with my cobalt violet 
Uh, I use the Winsor & Newton one. It's the best one that I've found. And kind of nothing else compares to it. And I was actually just yesterday squeezing out some of my core cobalt violet that I haven't tried yet. It was so full of binder. Yeah, I, I don't know how that will work. The Windsor, if you want a great cobalt violet that is more on like the pinkish side, oh, go for the Windsor and Newton. It's amazing. Okay, anyway, the mixtures are really, really beautiful. You get this kind of a very light kind of blush pink with that warm granulation. The granulation really mixed the violet and the, the warmer color of the lunar earth. Yum, 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 yum. <laughs> I don't know. I have to think about, like, really play with these colors. Um, I I like swatching, and I did find these color mixes to be extremely helpful. But, you know, I have to paint with these to see how they work. Okay, on the right side, we have more magic. Cobalt teal. How interesting are these mixes? You can see... And this is where I mixed it and I, I was like, yes, yes, yes. Because if you watched my video, I tried urban sketching. That's how it's called. I will link you to it. I was kind of struggling a little bit with painting those uh, copper roofs. There is a, a church in the town nearby um, where to where I live. The town is called Graz. And beautiful, beautiful, you know, classic European relatively small town city, small town city, small town, small city, whatever. It has about 300,000 uh, people. And it has these like copper roofs that have turned, you know, into patina as like, you know, they have rusted into this gorgeous turquoise color, which I'm extremely drawn to. I love that color. And I wasn't sure how to mix something. And if you look now in the screen, it's a little bit hard to see. Those mixes are a little bit on top. I will have uh, close-ups at the end of the video. If you add a touch of this lunar earth to turquoises, I think it looks like metal. And I think that would be amazing for drawing, you know, metal buildings or roofs or stuff like that. I think for that, this could be fantastic. So... Again, this is only from swatching and I still have to test it on actual painting. But um, yeah, if that's something you enjoy painting, like buildings, urban landscape, that sort of thing. Uh, and also seaside, rocks, anything with texture, you know, this is really something fun. I wanted to try it also with my lavender because I saw how I really enjoyed the mixtures with kind of more pastel colors I think because they have a little bit of white to them it just works better for my personal aesthetics with uh, the mixes with those colors because of that very kind of light pastel base I really liked it and the mixtures with lavender again were really really interesting I think these would be beautiful as like soft shadows you see the neutral colors um yeah just really really interesting i can't say if this is the most you know used i i can't imagine i would go through this paint so fast but yeah who knows <laughs> so a few other interesting mixes were i tried it with perlene green that was also really fun and kind of with neutral colors, I think you have to kind of use it lightly to get a little bit of that granulation. Um, not too much because then it, it looks a bit a bit too much for me personally. So I hope you find this, uh, you found this helpful. I did kind of compare it to a few other neutrals in my stash. The closest this one is in kind of color and tone is Burnt Sienna. In my opinion, at least the burnt sienna I have from Daniel Smith. You can see it. It's on the top there. It's the middle um, color between the three. The one on the left is Gotite and then the one on the right is Indian Red. Uh, all three from the Ultimate Mixing Set. So this is kind of in that tone. But again, it's a lot more granulating. And the base color, that's how I'm going to call it. I don't know if that's a technical term. 
but is much, much lighter. So burnt sienna, you, I think it does granulate. I don't use that color a lot. I know, shocker. But um, this is kind of just that granulation, like take the granulation from burnt sienna and a little bit of the pigment and that's what you have here. And here you can look closer at the mixtures. I'd like to hear your thoughts about this paint. I would love to know if you have used it in paintings, how you used it and what you thought about the results that you got. Make sure you subscribe and hit the notification bell so you can be notified when I post another one of these paint plays. There are three more coming and I have to say I'm really enjoying these lunar colors. This was probably the most, um, the one that I had the most ambiguous feelings towards. I just, I think I'm just curious to see what it will do for me. And the other two that I've already played with are gorgeous. So I wish you a wonderful day and I will see you in another video soon. Make sure you follow me also on Instagram because I'll hopefully be posting from my vacation more there. So see you in another video soon. Bye.